Good morning and welcome to Discipleship Empowerment Study. And today is our Carolyn News Reflection. Remember those of you who are living close by, you can find us that we write something in the Carolyn News. And it comes out every Thursday, well almost every Thursday, it comes out almost every week anyway, let's put it that way. And uh, our ad this time uh, looks a lot like this, or like this. And if you can see it, that shows you here, it talks about, it, it gives us a picture of Christ, the Son of God. And it says, the reason for the senior season is that Emmanuel, God, is with us. And it encourages us to believe and to receive. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about that whole area. It continues on with the theme of love. But instead of looking at the first John, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of John. And uh, again, to remind ourselves that the reason for this season is that Emmanuel, God, is with us. That he came to be with us. And we thank God for that. Just before we get started, again, we just want to share a little bit of testimony. Continue to praise God for the outreach of evangelism in our local mall where we're giving out hundreds and hundreds of gospel tracts every day in booklet form. We thank God for all the people who have sponsored this and are helping us to be able to do this and around the world. To share the pure gift of love to everyone who comes to our table and to pray for people and to uplift people and to encourage people and to be encouraged and uplifted ourselves. And we thank God for that. We're only a couple of days away from the big day, the Christmas day, where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And uh, we look forward to that. We will probably will be at the mall for a little bit tomorrow morning. But then after that, we will be uh, closed until Boxing Day. And then from Boxing Day through to uh, probably Friday, the following week, a week from today, we will still be there. We've been asked to stay and uh, just to be there for our Ukrainian brothers and sisters who uh, will prepare their Christmas season on January the 7th. And so we look forward to that and we're grateful that we can continue to share the gospel of Christ. One other prayer request and, and praise to the Lord. We've been working on something. You know, the Disciples' Principles of Faith book. Now, you're going to see it, and it doesn't look quite the same because this is in catch-in, but the words that are written. But the Disciples' Principles of Faith book has been officially printed, and it was a few copies were made in Thailand, and we're praying that as the Lord continues to provide uh, finances during this Christmas season, that we'll be able to print more in the country of Myanmar for the pastors and leaders and Sunday school teachers. And so we're grateful. This has been a labor of love of about four to five years uh, that we've been putting this together. And it's been proofread and proofread again in the Ketchin language. And we're excited about that. So continue to pray. But I just wanted to put this up as a praise item that God has finally brought this to fruition completion and that we can even spite of what's going on in the country of Myanmar we can be able to continue to publish uh, a book like this which is basic principles or basic doctrines of faith and so we're thankful and praising God for that these just come in the last couple days from Thailand and so they were printed in Thailand and they shipped us some over here and then we hope to print some more in the country of Myanmar. We're also uh, print, still having lots of these tracks, the, the pure gift of love. If you need some, come to the mall. We did get in contact with our um, Ukrainian translators and printers. They are still moving forward on another track that they hope to finish translating. And this also in Ukrainian so that they can begin to take it out around the country of Ukraine. So all these are exciting things that God is doing around the world. And there's lots more. We haven't had time today to talk about all of them, but we can 
at least encourage you to keep praying because we're doing this as a team. I was reading in a little booklet this morning that the most of the Bible is, is written in the idea of plurality. It's written to the, not just to the one, but to the many, the we's and the ours. And I thought that was a good little thought that we're doing it together around the world, touching lives for people around the world. And so, and if I haven't said it to you yet, just like our little card says right here, a Merry Christmas to you too. Well, we want to look at the teaching what is on this card that was found in the Carolyn News. And of course, it goes to John chapter 3, verse 16. I mean, what more, what, what greater message can you give to the world than John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever who believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's what it's all about. As I was thinking about on the back of the track here, we have the little phrase, believe and receive. And I got thinking the other night, sometimes I don't sleep all the time through the night, but I got thinking that there should be another one here. It should say, believe, receive, and be free. And uh, I'm thinking about adding that on to the next track because God wants us to believe, Jesus wants us to receive, and Christ wants to set us free. Amen? I think that's so important when we think about it because that's what... The purpose of Emmanuel, God with us, to come to be with us is all about that he can set us free from sin and our trespasses and our iniquities, from the disobedience and everything else that comes along with this idea of sin. And the, what he's doing to counteract that sin is to love us, just to continue to love, love, love. And that's what we're trying to do in the mall. And we're trying to continue to love people, to share the love of God with them, to share the love of God, you know, around the world. I believe that in with another month that we'll have probably 100,000 of these things out around the world. It's going to be unique as God opens up the door that we can, you know, take that. And then another thing I was sharing with a lot of our friends, they do evangelism with motorcycles. They go from community to community on motorcycles and i got thinking see they could have a little package like this they could go around there's a hundred in here and they could go around and tell people in their communities park their motorcycle get off and go door to door or go through the market whatever and share the love of god the pure gift of love and so in the carolyn news this is what we were trying to say that the reason for the season is that god is with us to present to us this wonderful gift of, of love. That may be hard to believe, but that's what it's all about. And so when we go into John chapter 3, we know that it, this all this, a good portion of this chapter is a discussion about Nicodemus. And we have a track on that, a booklet on Nicodemus, and it's also in Ukrainian and in English. I thought it was so important that this account be documented in a story form with pictures because it really sums up what Christ came to do. And he said, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And Nicodemus was struggling with that idea. Well, how do I get back inside my mother and be born again? And then Jesus confirms with him, yes, you are born of the water. That's from your mother's, from your mother's womb. But you need to be born of the spirit also which is from God. And so out of that conversation comes this scripture that many people know around the world, that many people can, can uh, have memorized and can tell you. And because love is the foundation to what God, can you imagine in heaven when, when, when this, this, this whole uh, thing came about of Christ coming in the fullness of time and uh, we're going to do it. We're going to go forward. And man was going to be, or Christ, was, who was the Son of God, would become Jesus, who was the Son of Man. And uh, it's so unique. But they needed to understand why. 
why he was coming. And so there is reasons, you know, uh, there is a reason for Jesus' birth. We say that, that Jesus is the reason for the season. Well, it's a good phrase because there was a reason for his coming. The reason was to redeem us, to save us, to deliver us from our sins. And there was a season that it, this was going to be fulfilled. A lot of times in different commentaries and books, they say we're in the season of grace or we're in the age of grace where we can yet experience the fullness of Jesus Christ. But that only will not always be, that the age of grace will end somewhere along the line when the fullness of Christ, again, is being fulfilled. So the reason was to present his gift of love. The season is what we're in right now. We should be about our Father's business, talking to people about the love of God so that the kingdom of God could grow. <coughs> and so when we look at this, uh, not only is he the reason for the season, but he is the Emmanuel who would be God with us. If you were to go over into Isaiah chapter 7 now think about this probably 700 to a thousand years before the time of christ around 700 years uh we got in isaiah 7 14 a prophecy that is given to us that we should understand that isaiah would never see fulfilled in his physical life here on earth but he would see it fulfilled in god's glory for it says, the Lord will bring the king, sorry, back it up here to 14. It says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. So here we have a sign. The Lord himself, Isaiah's prophesying, the Lord himself. Isn't that an amazing thought? This is something that the Lord is doing, not us. The Lord himself will give you a sign. If you don't know what to believe and how to believe and and uh, people were saying how will we know when the messiah is here how do we know that and isaiah prophesies that you know it's amazing that in israel they have the full scroll of isaiah on that you can see across from the knesset across from the government buildings and in, in the museum there and it and uh you could go right there and see it in Hebrew, this verse. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. And I like that because I believe that's what the Holy Spirit, that's why we're handing out these tracts and handing out Bibles and handing out uh, booklets. Because we believe somewhere through there that God is going to speak by his spirit into people's lives and draw them to himself. Well, here, Isaiah says, that the Lord himself will give you a sign. And behold, a virgin shall be conceive and bear a son. So the miracle, it was going to be a sign of a miracle. Because everybody back then knew a virgin could not get impregnated. In the sense of without having a conception between a man and a woman. It was impossible. So when, when Isaiah is, is, is speaking this and prophesying, can you imagine the, the, the scholars in that and saying, what are you saying? Isaiah, that's impossible. You mean a virgin is going to get pregnant and have a son? And the answer is yes. But she would be impregnated by the power of the Holy Spirit, which we see in Luke, that the Holy Spirit came upon her and shone around about her. And that which was put in here was conceived by the Lord. It's an amazing thought. And, and it's interesting. That's one of the things that so many cults and false religions, you know, point out didn't happen. And so when you point out that, that that didn't happen, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, the sign never took place yet. You know, but the thing is, people need to understand the sign did take place. Our calendar our Christmas season, everything is based on the birth of Jesus Christ, who was born of a virgin, who was prophesied about 700 years before that this would take place by Isaiah, which, as I said, would have been a phenomenal statement because back in the olden days, if you were a prophet, 
and your prophecies were not fulfilled, you would be put to death. You would be stoned for speaking not the truth from God. And so here Isaiah is standing up before the people and saying that God, hey people, God's going to give you a sign. Look at this. This is the funny thing. We can see in the mall people buying Christmas gifts and Christmas music is on and people are talking about Christmas, but right under their nose they forget that this was a sign. This was going to be the sign that God is truly God. And the sign would be is that a virgin would be born. And look what it goes on and it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. It's an amazing thing. And the reason for this season is Emmanuel. And the reason for the season is that it's a sign to the non-believers. It's a sign to the religious communities. It's a miracle that took place, a miracle of love that took place where Mary was conceived by the Spirit, a son, and this son would be known as Emmanuel, God with us. And so when you go over, and again, if you go over to Matthew chapter 1, Again, he, he verifies about this because he, Matthew is wanting to link the kingdom of heaven. Matthew is all about the kingdom of heaven, most of it, and wants to link that God, who was the king of heaven, has come. And so in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, this prophecy is again spoken. Behold, a virgin shall come with a child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And so here we are now over into John chapter 3, verse 16. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, because of that, now we can know that Jesus is now speaking to a religious ruler, somebody who was wise in the scriptures. And he's talking to them about birth. And so a Pharisee would say, well, yeah, because Pharisees and Sadducees, the religious people, knew the book of Isaiah, probably almost off by heart. And so when Jesus refers back to this, you must be born again. You must be born of water, and you must be born of the Spirit. And see, Jesus himself was conceived of the Spirit of God and came forth as God. He came forth as Emmanuel the Son of God and the Son of Man. And so John is now going to give us this idea, for God so loved the world that he gave. You know, that was the interesting thing that, that Isaiah was going to show. You shall see a sign. And what that sign would be is that God would give a son. That God would give. See, the reason for the season is not all about us giving to each other. What we need to focus on is what God gave to us. The greatest gift that could ever be given was given by God. And we forget that. We lose all of that in the season. We lose all that about what's, what's happening around about us. Not, instead of rejoicing over the gift that God has given to us, there, that we can remember and, and, and meditate on during the season, we forget that, that that's what it's all about. And we get into this frenzy of all kinds of other things and overwhelmingness and depression and everything else during the season where we should be just sitting back and meditating for a minute and thinking about, okay, Isaiah prophesied that there shall be a sign. And what was the sign? Did, did the prophet, was the prophet true? And the answer, yes. Because there was a sign that was given. And the sign that was given was Mary would be conceived, who was a virgin, a child. And when that child would come forth, his name would be Emmanuel, which is God with us. Just meditate on that just for a few moments and it should change 
a lot of your thinking about the, the rat race of the Christmas season. I mean, yesterday when we were in the mall, we seen people coming and going, coming and going, people yelling at each other, hurry up, let's get moving, you know, don't waste any time, we've only got so much time, and no, we don't have enough money to buy that one, but we'll buy this one instead. I mean, the conversations that are going on in the mall, that of the people walking by, it's worth the time just to sit there and listen to it. But they forget that the reason for the season is that a sign would be given. A sign would be given. And so the question I have to ask you today, was the sign given? And history records for us that the sign was given. Our calendar, the dates, the years that we live under, that shows that a sign was given. Now the challenge is, do we believe in the sign? Do we believe that a virgin gave forth a child who is Emmanuel, who would be called, which means God with us. The greatest gift of love, for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son. Only one son, and he gave it. That who would ever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The running around that we're all doing around the world, doesn't matter where you are, trying to get all these presents and gifts and decorations, all these running around, keeps us so busy that we forget the greatest miracle that took place, that Isaiah prophesied about, that God would be with us, and the condition for everlasting life would be simply believe. Believe. Believe, receive, and be free. Believe, receive, and be free. Amen. So today, as we look at this newspaper article, I want to read, because a lot of you don't know what, what it is. Um, I want to read it to you. It says, Love is the foundation stone to all that God does. People ask sometimes, What does love have to do with anything? And the answer is everything. God so loved people even though they were rebellious and sinful towards him. Out of love, he still sent his son who would become the only way, the one who could, who the that one could escape eternal death. The way would be by faith, believing God's gift of love through his son. God does not want anyone to perish but he wanted everyone to see that the way out of death and destruction was going to come to all with who would believe and receive Jesus Christ's sacrifice of love, which would come through his death on the cross. And the empowerment that it says, Christ came as Emmanuel, which means God with us, to this earth to show forth to all that there was and is only one way, one truth and one life to live and it comes through christ jesus john fourteen six. his sacrificial gift of love opens the door for all who would believe to have eternal life john three fifteen. and as we as we willingly personally accept god's love of gift of jesus christ are we willing to personally accept god's love gift of jesus christ today so that's what's going out in our area to ten to 15,000 people. And we need to pray that that would speak into people's lives. And those of you who are believers, I want to encourage you to look into the scriptures. Look at Isaiah's prophecy in Isaiah 7.14. Look at what Matthew said in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Look at what Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. And the key to all of this is that a sign would be given. He would be Emmanuel, God with us. And the key to all of that is, will you just believe? Believe and receive. That's what it's all about. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to put your word in our local newspaper, to put your word out under the highways and byways through the internet, to put your word into printed form 
Oh God, we thank you for that. And may you use it, anointed by your Holy Spirit, that it would speak into people's lives. And Lord, that you would use it for your glory. And so Lord, I just want to commit everyone who listens today that they may be stirred in their hearts, realizing that God did give us a sign. He prophesied he would give us a son who would be born of a virgin, which he did. And his name is Emmanuel, which means you are with us, that you want to be with us and in us. And so, Lord, I just thank you for your word today and may it encourage us and strengthen us in you this day, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. We have a one more day. Actually, this is it for this week, but continue to pray. And uh, if you want this card, you didn't receive it. We actually have this as a card out in the mall. Come on by and just say, I like to have one of those cards. And uh, that was in the newspaper. We got it printed up as a card and we've been sending it out and handing it out to people. So if you want the bit, if you want a physical copy of this, come on over to the mall. Come and see us. Amen. We love you. Keep on keeping on. And Lord willing, we'll see you maybe on Monday or even earlier, depending on what God is saying into our hearts. Amen. God bless you and have a Merry Christmas.